a new series on Netflix just came out called Quarterback. And in this series, Patrick Mahomes is seen describing his pregame routine in quite some detail, which is really interesting to see. And I'm going to break it down with a more sports psychology lens and explain how they might be connected to boosting his mental game. And there's going to be a lot of ways that you can kind of see what he does and think about how you can do the same thing for your own pregame routine. Before we get into it, I want to explain main reasons why athletes and performers have a pregame routine, because we're going to keep coming back to those reasons throughout the video. So reason number one why a lot of performers have a pregame routine is essentially everything feels more familiar. And when something feels more familiar, you're going to have less anxiety because anxiety is rooted in this not knowing of what's going to happen in the future. So if you can just tip the scales a little bit in your favor and feel more comfortable with whatever's going on, you can feel less anxious. You can see how that's going to play in more confidence when this game or performance does start. And then another feature of the pregame routine is it helps you make less decisions throughout that hour or two before a game. And going back to something I talked about a while ago of President Obama wearing the same tie on each day of the week when he was president, this was because he wanted to save his brain power, for lack of a better word, for the more important decisions, not on what color tie he's going to be wearing that day. He wants to save it for all the speeches he has to prepare for, all the conversations he has to focus for. Similar for Patrick. He's going to want to save his brain power for strategizing quickly, effectively, reacting in the moment, all this other stuff. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Kansas City trying to make the AFC title game for the fifth straight year. My routine is the same every time. I'm very superstitious. Okay, I first want to point out something funny that he says where he says, my routine is the same thing every time. I'm very superstitious. Now, those are in conflict of each other. Routines are very different from superstitions. And the main reason for this is superstitions are essentially you giving power to something that does not have power. My favorite example of this is putting on your right sock before your left sock. A lot of people do something like this. And clearly, objectively, this has no impact on how you should play and perform as an athlete. Yet there's some weird spiritual meaning behind it of I'm going to be a bad athlete if I put on my left sock before my right one. So this really doesn't have any impact on the game unless unless you're just going to crumble mentally if you do put on your left sock before your right one. And there's no benefit to putting on your right sock first other than getting rid of any tension that going against this superstition would be. A routine, on the other hand, is just a set of actions you do consistently for a desired effect. And in this pregame routine example, that desired effect is the familiarity, the effective preparation. That's what we're going for. And that all feeds into confidence. So he talks about a superstition in the middle of this that I'm going to break it down a bit more. But I just want to mention that off the top. If it's a home game, I usually wear some casual clothes. And if it's a away game, I'll throw on the suit and uh, show out a little bit. Okay, so what's going on here with the outfit system that he has? I'm sure you can think of a time that you felt a lot of confidence just from an outfit you were wearing. So whether you were felt like you had some swag on or you just felt good about how you looked, that's going to have a direct impact on confidence a lot of times. And there's no reason to miss that opportunity in sports. So whatever you can do to feel confident from the second you start walking into the arena, why not go for it? Another thing to mention here is this is a thing that you dial in over years, over years of playing. So whereas Patrick has this system of showing out for away games and being casual at home games, maybe another athlete likes to really dress nicely for his home crowd, feeling like he's showing out for his own supporters. Whereas if you're going to a away game, you're kind of the villain and you're already in, you're already traveling. You're, you're probably just living out of a suitcase. Maybe you do want to opt for the more casual attire because you're going to feel more confident by basically just being comfortable and not feeling like you have to show out. So, and you could even do suits for all games. You could feel like you just play better when you do casual outfits, no matter where you're playing. Again, it's a system that takes a long time to dial in, but Patrick has likely 
found from all of his days playing from high school to now that he likes this system. And if, if the whole team, the culture and the coach is okay with it, uh, then clearly you got to go for what works for you. And this is what's working for Patrick. I go to the locker room and I change to my hoodie. Then I head out to the bench for like 20 to 30 minutes just to kind of see the stadium and get myself in the right mindset. So this might be the most dense part of the pregame routine that I want to talk about because I think the vast majority of listeners who are athletes and performers who have a pregame routine probably overlook this part. So Patrick says he likes to change into his hoodie or just his warmups, and he goes out to the bench for 20 to 30 minutes on the field. And like he says, he gets into the right mindset and sees the stadium. I was talking to an athlete recently about what he might be doing here, and he says he's getting a feel for the field. And this is on point. And let me explain. Imagine all the sensory information you are processing in the middle of a game. So when I say sensory information, just think all the information through your sight, everything you're hearing, and then what you're feeling. The brain is constantly processing a lot of this. Now, let's focus on sight because this is where the most information is coming in. It's especially important as a quarterback when you need to be so quick on your feet thinking about what you see and acting on it. So if there's any lack of focus or any lapse in focus while you're looking for the right pass or trying to read a defensive scheme, it's going to come back and haunt you. So by going out into the stadium, before you even start playing, you're kind of familiarizing your brain with what everything looks like. And what you're doing is you're preparing your brain ahead of time to manage or process all this information so it doesn't have to process any extra information when the moment counts. So let's say Patrick's looking around and he's getting a feel for the field. He's noticing any little intricacies about this field on this day in this lighting, everything that is going to be processed, whether consciously or subconsciously by the brain. He's doing this ahead of time so that it won't add to any of the mental demands going on during the game, because that could be the difference in a win or a loss, right? One other way you can do this effectively is visualization exercises. And I instruct every one of my athletes to do this as part of their pregame routine for the same reason of preparing your mind effectively for when you're out there doing the real thing. And what's great about doing this on the bench is if you're visualizing right there on the bench, you're going to make these visualizations much more effective because you have more data to work with right in front of you. And this visualization can be with eyes open or eyes closed. And essentially what you're doing is just seeing the game, seeing what you can expect to happen and unfold in this game ahead of time. So again, you can start planning, strategizing, becoming familiar with what's about to come. You can't focus for that long while you're doing visualizations. It should be really a couple minutes at a time. It's like reps like that. So in between reps, you can open your eyes and recenter yourself on where you are, reminding your brain of, okay, this is what we're picturing. This is all the stuff I'm going to try and insert into my imagined experience to help prepare my brain effectively. And you can also do this with the sounds of the stadium, if there's anything unique about it that you can see in pregame, and then as well as your feel. So sometimes certain courts might feel different. Sometimes the weather is going to be different. Again, help prepare your brain as effectively as possible in advance so that you can put it in the best possible place to succeed. So again, I would highly encourage you if you don't do anything like this as part of your pregame routine to start doing something like it. And it doesn't even have to be 20 to 30 minutes. And it doesn't even have to be on the field specifically. It can be near the field. You can do this in, in the seat. Uh, from the stadium, you're still kind of familiarizing your brain, but basically being as close as possible to where you're going to be mid-game is the goal. And I walk out to midfield, being a baseball player and superstitious, I try not to step on any lines or logos. Being a baseball player and being superstitious, Patrick likes to avoid stepping on any lines or logos. So again, objectively, can we really say that doing so is making him a better football player? No. There, there's clearly no impact on it aside from if he did actually do this, he would be a mental mess because he is worried that he angered some football gods. So, so he says this is a part of his pregame routine. And again, I nor should anyone really tell him otherwise. I mean, look what he's doing, but 
the thing that you got to be wary of is this, is this actually going to affect your game if you accidentally mess up your superstitions? So while it's part of his pregame routine, it's not something that anybody should actively be looking to add to their pregame routine, some type of superstition. Maybe unless you're like having fun with it and it's something that just is entertaining to you, keeps your mind occupied. But other than that, there's no point to it. And then from there, I'll head to the opposing team's end zone and I pray at the goalpost. So there might be some symbolism from going to the opposing team's end zone to pray rather than doing it in your own. Um, but it also could just be like it's less crowded there usually. Um, it could also be like, a, I'm going to find myself near the opposing team's end zone more often. And that's kind of where I want to do my praying. But again, this is a much more of an individual choice of where you want to do this, that you feel like you can get the most out of it. So I'm sure a lot of players might do it elsewhere on the field, and there's nothing wrong with that. Next, I'll head to the other side and stretch to get warmed up. So after this, Patrick is talking about doing stretches, doing warm-ups. Now, this should obviously be a part of everybody's pregame routine because this is the physical part of it that is going to actually get your body familiarized with what you're about to do rather than just your brain. However, something worth mentioning that a lot of sports psychology coaches talk about is integrating mental skills into your physical preparation. So especially during stretches, Doing some deep breaths is a great way to get more out of your stretch. And if you're feeling really anxious, really stressed out for this game, and you can feel your heart racing, that's when you can start going into breathing exercises that can also lower your heart rate and bring your arousal and activity level down in the body. So again, this is just one way to feel 1% more confident when your game does start by combining physical and mental skills as part of your routine. I try to practice every throw that I can make in a game, uh, the distances that I need to throw, a little long toss, um, and every arm angle that I need. So practicing every throw that he could possibly make is a really important part of preparation, right? So as I mentioned earlier, the pregame routine is so much about the preparation piece. And while Patrick might not make every single one of these throws that he's practicing, he's putting himself in the right mindset in case he does need to. So if he finds himself in the third quarter where he needs to make a certain type of throw that he has not done since warmups, he will at least have done it in warmups somewhat recently as opposed to like earlier in the week that makes him feel more prepared and that actually is making him be more prepared. So again, ahead of time, how can you put your mind in a state to most likely succeed? One of those ways is basically planning for every situation to come up. And that's why a lot of times when you're doing those visualization exercises before games and you're on the field, imagining what might happen, you don't want to just imagine disasters and you don't want to just imagine highlight real plays. You want to imagine every play you can kind of expect to happen. So uh, whether it's him getting sacked, whether it's him having to avoid a sack and make a certain type of throw, make a rush, kind of scramble, it's important to imagine everything so that, again, your mind is feeling as prepared as possible. Then I'll join my coaches and Chad Henney. I always end that session of throwing. Uh, I play a little DB. And then catching the pass from Chad. And then finally, I have to do my trademark fadeaway shot um, into the arms of one of my teammates. So then Patrick joins his coaches and backup quarterback, and he ends a session of throwing by playing a little DB, defensive back. So this is him clearly doing stuff that is not for the game ahead. I mean, he's not going to be playing DB at all. He's not going to be catching any passes during the game, ideally. So what's he doing? What's going on here? Why is this guy goofing off and having a good time when you're preparing for a big NFL game? Well, it's safe to assume that a lot of people listening and a lot of people at the top of the top of their leagues get nervous before games, right? Anxiety and stress, while healthy, it often goes overboard where you need to kind of let loose a little bit in order to be your best and not overthink as much. So 
just like how pregame routines are meant to help you feel more familiar with whatever's going on and take down some anxiety, manage it, you can do the same by having a good time, having fun. That is one way to, first of all, remind yourself that you have a really fun time playing your sport, but also take some of that anxiety and channel it in a healthy way that is going to leave you feeling your best and not overthinking, not really thinking really tight and stuff like that. And then I love this talking about his, his trademark fadeaway shot. I mean, just so goofing off that you'd, you'd see this in high school or middle school or something and, and all of his teammates are having a good time. So clearly this is infectious, making everyone kind of a bit more lighthearted, having a good time. And I just imagine they're going to be a bit less stressed out as a result. Once I get back in uniform, I come up um, and do our pregame drills. So he gets back into his uniform, now doing pregame drills, stuff similar to what we saw last time, but it's a lot different now because, again, that feel for the game, being in your equipment, things are different. Your brain is processing information a bit differently. And especially making your passes, making these handoffs, when your vision is much different because of your helmet. So seeing the kind of bars in front of you, you want to, again, prepare your brain most effectively. And it's important to repeat a lot of this stuff with your equipment on. And some players might opt for doing certain drills with their equipment off. That's not as necessary to do with their equipment on. And then having more specific things to do when all their stuff is on. Love you, love you, love you. Yes, Brittany and Sterling. And then he goes and kisses Brittany and his kid right before games. This is important to talk about because social support, whether it's from within your team, like a teammate or a coach or outside of your team, like family, is a great way to just buffer the effects of stress. And what I mean by that is the effects of stress where it gets you feeling really tight, maybe starts to make you overthink. It's going to reduce those effects when you have, when you feel supported and a really fun interesting sports psychology nugget here is just your perception of having a strong support network of saying like, I have people to go to. I know exactly who I could contact and go to if I need support and help is just as powerful, if not more powerful than the actual act of going to those people for support. So again, social support is big. If you want to inject some of that into your routine, like Patrick is doing here, I would totally support that. So during the anthem, Patrick stands at the 30-yard line. Now, again, this could go back to familiarity. He's in the same spot every game, likely next to the same teammates. He has relatively the same view every time. And this could also go back to he's just making fewer decisions. There's no reason to have to decide where he's going to stand every game for the anthem uh, and like waste any any cognitive power deciding on that little insignificant mark so so just having a tradition of like yeah this is my spot and i'm sure a lot of his teammates have the same after the coin toss i talk to the end zone that we are defending and... okay so after the coin toss patrick jogs to the end zone that he's defending does some high jumps and it yells loudly bangs his chest is clearly hyping himself up and me just by watching this. But what's really going on here? Well, everybody that I work with, when I help them create their perfect pregame routine, first, the very first step in that is figuring out their number. And that's something that I'm going to ask you now. There's a number between one through 10 that represents your energy level at the start of a game that most often will correlate with your best performances. So to give you an example, there might be an athlete who says, I like to be at a five out of 10. I like to be really middle ground between one, which is like super calm and Zen, and then a 10, which is kind of bouncing off the walls, similar to Patrick here. A lot of athletes might like to be in the middle somewhere, like a five. And then other athletes, especially if you're playing on a different position where you need more energy, you might want to be at an eight or even a nine. And then other positions, you want to be lower. You like to be at a three or four, so you can really have that patience and be able to think th think through all your options more effectively. Once you have your number, that's what you can design your pregame routine around of how can I design this routine to help me land at this number for every game so that I can more consistently be at my best. And let's say Patrick 
probably likes to be pretty high. I like to imagine. Now there is, I have some reservation behind that because as a quarterback, you're going to have to have some patience, some calmness. And also obviously you got to be high in energy of making sure your whole team is with you on the plan, yelling at everyone for change of formations. And then of course, just having to scramble in a moment's notice and all this different stuff. So it might be true that his number, he's, he's always under it when he's about to start a game. He always wants to just get a little bit more excited, a little bit more hype and adrenaline going through his system right before a game. And this is his tool that he does. So this could have easily been an awareness thing of maybe he did this a few times and found that maybe it wasn't even a great game, but he felt the best when that game started, when he did something like this. He might have done it multiple times and found, I keep feeling good when I do this. Let me keep doing it. And now that's how it becomes something that he does for every game. So that's where the experimentation piece is very important of try something out, but don't base it off of the results. Don't base it off of whether or not you won that game or even you played really well. It's more about what state of mind did that put you in, especially at the beginning of the game, because that's not going to have much, much of an effect five minutes into your game because you're, you're on something completely different. You're already into the game, into the rhythm of it. It's more about, okay, I'm about to start. I'm starting now. How do I feel? That's where your pregame routine is really targeting for the most part. So I hope you guys enjoyed this different type of podcast episode. I'll be looking to do more solo casts in the future based off similar things like this. And if you have any suggestions at all, please feel free to email me at the sports psychology of at gmail.com, or you can message me on Instagram at the sports psychology of. Thank you so much for listening.